So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at grouping discrete or continuous data. And the end goal is to be able to create a histogram, which is uh, a specific type of bar graph, if you think about it that way. So a couple things about grouped frequency tables. So the first thing, depending on what data values you've gathered or you're using, there should be between 5 to 15 groups or classes of equal width. So those, for example, are bands like, you know, 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 7, uh, I'm sorry, 11 to 15, etc. Equal with meaning they should be the same spacing apart. So we don't want something like 1 to 5, 6 to 8, um, 9 to 14, etc. Okay? So the second thing, your groups or your classes must cover all data, so you don't want to leave anything out, and they must not overlap or have gaps, so it should be some continuous number line, if you think of it that way. Um, you can have empty groups, so if you do end up having a gap, um, you want to have a group there that would represent, that would be zero, basically. Okay, so in this video we're just going to look at how to create your groups, create your classes, and start by doing a frequency table. Um, so if you look at example one, the heights in centimeters of the 25 students in a first grade classroom are as follows, so those are all in centimeters. We want to organize this in a frequency table, and there's of course a lot of different ways to create the frequency table. It all depends on how you define your classes um, or define your groups. A rule of thumb to find your groups, what you do is find your highest value, your lowest value, and divide it by the number of classes or groups you'd like to create. So for example, um, in example one, let's find the lowest number. So I'm seeing 88.9 is my minimum value. My lowest is 88.9. My highest is, what do we see here? 123.1. Yeah, 123.1. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what number of classes or groups do I want. And this is up to you. Again, anywhere from 5 to 15. Um, I usually try to aim for about 6, 7, 8-ish. Um, so let's go ahead and let's say 7. Right? But anywhere from 5 to 15 is kind of good because we want to be able to compare what we're seeing. So what you're going to do to figure out your number, um, your intervals then, would be take your highest minus your lowest, divide it by the number of classes you'd like. And you can round this to the nearest um, whole number value or whatever intervals you're comfortable using. So if you want to do tenths, uh, hundredths, whatever, I typically like whole number values. So this is going to give me approximately 4.89. So I'm going to round that to 5. So I'm going to be looking at intervals of 5 and uh, spaced out by 5. So that could be anything from like 80 to 85, um, 85 to 90, 90 to 95, wherever you want to start. Um, you just want to make sure you incorporate all your values. So I know my interval size. is going to be 5, and that's going to give me about 7, maybe 8 classes, depending on where I decide to put my um, start point. So this, I should write my target number of classes. I might be a little bit over or a little bit under, depending on where I start. So if you're like me, I like nice numbers. Um, so I'm going to start at 85, so I can go 85 to 90, 90 to 95, etc. But if you want, you could start at 88, because that incorporates the smallest value. So it all depends on you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a table. And I like to add an extra column the book doesn't do for this section. I like to put that tally column in again um, just to organize my work. So I'm going to put height, which is my data, in centimeters. I'm going to add in a tally column and then my frequency. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and fit your classes under the height. So again, I'm starting at 85 because I like to start with pretty numbers, but you don't have to. Um, you can write 85 dash, you know, 90 and go on from there, but I like to be very clear when I can. So I'm going to say 85 is less than or equal to um, height h, which is less than 90. So I know it's all the way up to, but not including 90. So it's an inclusive on the left, 
um, not inclusive on the right, right? And so on. So 90 is less than or equal to H is less than or equal to 90 is less than 95. So once again, I'm including 90 in the second class, but not 95, etc. So those are my eight classes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So I targeted seven, but because I started a little bit lower than the minimum, um, the smallest value, um, I ended up with one extra class, which is fine because I'm still within that five to 15 range. Then you want to go ahead and tally and then calculate out your totals, your frequencies. Um, one thing I want to mention, remember how I said you can't overlap and you also don't have gaps. That's why we are picking one, um, side to include that borderline value, right? So 90 is not included in the lower class, but it's included in the one class above it. So we're still having a continuous flow of numbers, but we're careful to show what um, group it belongs to. So go ahead and tally it up and let's check your frequency. So check and see if you match my data. Remember, it's always a good idea to add up your frequencies for each class because it should sum to the total data values. So if we add this up, it should add up to 25, which is what we started with. Okay, so look at how to do this and put it into a histogram in class. Um, thanks for listening.